move on yeah so praise praise jesus so uh, we 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 looked at it clearly and i i would just want us to run through a few verses you know popular is john chapter 3 and verse 16 john 3 16 says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life okay so jesus came to give a gift of life to people who were already alive they were going to bed at night and waking up in the morning so going to bed and waking up in the morning is not that thank god for the gift of life no these people were alive but then jesus came to give life in john chapter 10 verse 10 the bible says the thief comes not but for to steal to kill destroy i have come that you may have life so how do you give life to someone who is alive? It means you're giving them a new kind of life. You're giving them a different kind of life. You're giving them a higher type of life. Do you understand that? Jesus came to give us life, all right? And then Romans chapter three, I mean, Romans six rather, and verse 23, Romans six twenty-three says that the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. Do you understand that? The wages of sin is is death and that's what we're learning this gift of life and we're saying hey what exactly is this gift of life what is, what what is it is it going to bed and waking up every morning no it's not now we should be grateful to god all right that we are able to go to bed and wake up in the morning we should thank him but the people out there all right who do not believe in jesus christ also say, hey, thank God for the gift of life. Maybe it's their birthdays and then they do a birthday shoot and they post pictures and go, thank God for the gift of life. We need to educate them. We need to let them know that there's such a thing as the gift of life and it can only be found in Jesus Christ. Jesus made it clear, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So the gift of life can only be found in Christ Jesus, nowhere else, no place else, nobody else it's only in Christ Jesus and now we who have received all right Jesus all right who have received his finished work believed in our heart confessed him as Lord we who have done that Bible says we have received this gift of life but the the sad part really is we don't know what it is and we don't seem to know what to do with it all right so we're learning this so we could know what it is what exactly is this gift of life all right and and yesterday was beautiful um quite foundational for almost every one of us and then beautiful so that we could all just learn what it is and then we go deeper 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 you know thank you there jesus you know in in this whole learning and then our lives will never ever remain the same so once again romans chapter 6 and 23 i, I want to kick off something from there Romans chapter 6 and 23. If you have your writing materials, please um, just take note of all these things, right? Romans chapter 6, 23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what we're learning in this episode of Word Up, we're saying, hey, we need to understand the, the real gift of life, all right? So the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life. If, if you grew up like me, hearing a lot of evangelistic messages, then this verse, you would have heard it. You would have heard Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. You would have heard this Romans 6 and 23, the wages of sin is death. So if you sin, you will die. If you sin, you will die. But what we need to understand from this Romans 6, 23, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. All right, just help me hold on on that verse and I'll call your attention to something. Jesus said in the gospel of John, he said, there is no greater love than this for a man to lay down his life for friends. All right, there is no greater love than this for a man to lay down his life. So Jesus laying down his life for us all right, was that sacrifice. In fact, Peter was writing and Peter said, the just died for the unjust. The just died for the unjust so the wages of sin is death so while we get busy telling people because you sin you're going to die because the wages of sin is death we forgot to tell them that jesus therefore came as an act of love and then he died did you get that 
he died. He died, as in he, he died for every one of us, all right? So he took the wages of the sin. Let's see Romans chapter 5. We could read it from the fifth verse, and then we'll go to the eighth verse, all right? Romans 5, all right, we could pick it from 5 to 8. And hope makes not ashamed, all right? For the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that God has given unto us. So we'll go to verse 6. And then you'll speak it down from there. For when we were without strength, for when we were without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. These are the people, all of us were the people that were supposed to die because the wages of sin is death, all right? The wages of sin is death. So, but he came to die. So when we were without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, verse seven, verse seven. yeah. For scarcely for a righteous man would anybody die. Yet, <laughs> peradventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. I mean, maybe, maybe not, <laughs> all right? But look at verse 8. I, I like verse 8. Verse 8 says clearly, but God demonstrated, God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Did you get that? God demonstrated, you know, sometimes you're going through a hard time, a difficult moment, and you're like, God, if you love me, just show it. If you love me, God, just show it. Tell everybody, let people know you love me. But God has gone the distance. God has gone all the way to show his love for you. And the Bible makes it clear here. For God demonstrated, God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. All right. So we're, we came all this way, you know, right? Because we we're coming from Romans 6 and 3. So we're going to read this one more time and then go to Romans 6 and 3. All right. For God commended his love towards us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. So he died our death. I know you know that, but these are verses that would help you see it. He died our death. He died our death. I, I know you know it, but you need to just let it sink in. He died our death, all right, we were the ungodly, we were the sinners, he died in our place, all right, so go back to that Romans 6 and 23, and then we just, all right, keep keep flowing from there, for the wages of sin is death, so you preach, you know, we, we grew up hearing those kind of messages, all oh, the wages of sin is death, so because you sin, and then you're gonna die, and then because you sin, you know, and then you're gonna die, because the wages of sin is death, so hey, you will die, but hold on, someone now came and died for us all right someone came and gave himself for us someone came and submitted you know he he was our substitute he was our sacrifice all right so while we were yet sinners christ died all right but watch this two things in the verse the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life so he takes away our death and gives us the gift of life. Did you get that? He takes away our death, gives us the gift of life. He takes away our death, and then he gives us the gift of life. It, it, it's it simple. I, I know you know it. I, I know you know it. It needs to sink in. He takes away our death. He gives us a gift of life. It needs to sink in. So that you and I will be clear on what did he do for me? He gave me the gift of life. The gift of life is not the being alive. The gift of life is not waking up every morning and like you woke up this morning. That's not the gift of life. All right. Jesus in John 10, 10 said, I have come that you may have life. And I have come that you may have it more abundantly. Do you understand that? I've come that you may have life. And I've come that you may have it more abundantly. He was talking to people who were alive. So being physically alive is not the gift of life. Did you get that? Being physically alive is not the gift of life. He came to give the gift of life to people who were alive. So if you've received Jesus, then you have the gift of life. All right. So what happens to everybody walking on the earth and walking down the streets who are not born again? Technically, spiritually, they're dead. All right, Ephesians chapter 2 from the first verse. Ephesians 2 verse 1. All right, technically, 
they're, they're dead. They're, they're dead. Just, yeah, dead men walking. So in Ephesians chapter 2 and the first verse, I mean, Paul says, and you as he quickens, the word quicken, there's King James Old English to make a life. And you as he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You as he made alive. How? He gave you the gift of life. You as he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And I, we're going to read this Ephesians 2 and then read it a bit further. And then you see the, the, the beauty. Oh, dear. The beauty of all of this. And you as he made alive or quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins or verse 2. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, and our works in the children of disobedience. Verse three, please. All right. Among whom also we had our conversation in time past, fulfilling the loss of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were by nature. We are no longer by nature, but God. But God, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love with which he loved us. All right, so the revelation in verse one is repeated again in the King James. All right, let's see verse five now. God, rich in mercy for the great love which you love that even when we were dead in sins has quickened us together with Christ. We were dead, he made us alive. We were dead, he made us alive. So anybody who hasn't accepted Christ Jesus is still dead. Dead, dead, Adam dead from the beginning dead. Anyone who hasn't accepted what Christ did for us, who hasn't confessed him as Lord, is dead. Do you understand that? So we, we all need to come into the simplicity of this truth. We, we need to come into the simplicity, you know, of this revelation and realize, hey, that there is a new life I have received in Christ Jesus. And, and I love this. Even when we're dead in, you know, sins, he made us alive. He made us alive. And, and the beauty of this revelation is not, you know, could you maybe possibly picture a graveyard right now and then um, different, you know, um, graves, all right? And then God now says, hey, you get up. And the person gets up. And then, oh, yeah, you, you're next. You get up. And then the person gets up. And then, hey, you, you're next. You get up. And he gets up. And you get up. And she gets up. And then, you know, one after the other, no. The Greek word communicated there is to be reanimated together, co-jointly, right? To be reanimated co-jointly, to come up together. So it was one resurrection. It was not a different resurrection. It was one resurrection. You, you have to understand this. It, it's, it's beautiful, all right? Of course, I know you know, physically speaking, he resurrected, all right? But we resurrected together with him. So even when we were dead in sins, he quickened us together. He reanimated us together. He made us alive together. All right, let, let's see um, TPT, this, this version, this verse rather, the Passion Translation here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ. He brought us, it was, it was a union, all right? It wasn't anything separate. He united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. So I'm going to read Amplified from, from this verse to just five and six, Amplified. So we'll do five into six, Amplified. So that you see the meaning. I, I want you to see this, guys, please, all right? Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together, watch this, in fellowship and in union with Christ. Please understand that. He made us alive, all right, together in fellowship, in union. It was one resurrection. It wasn't um, multiple resurrections. It was one. He gave us the very life of Christ himself and which TPT was also, you know, moving in about on he gave us a very life of christ of the same new life with which he quickened him so when we resurrected as something called a resurrected life 
when we were raised up together with him, we were not raised up the old self. We're not raised up the old, you know, you or the old me. We came up with a new life, came up with a new self, came up as a new you. That's what you did. That's what happened to you, happened to me. And this is a beautiful revelation. Let's see again. Even when we were dead, guys, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him for it's by grace, his favor, mercy, which we did not deserve that as we were saved, delivered from judgment and made partakers of his salvation. Do you understand that? We are raised together in a new life with the very life of Christ. The same life he resurrected with is the life the believer has. So it's, it's one thing, and that's why this needs to be talked about, all right? You and I have to wake up to that reality and say, hey, this is the gospel. This is the gospel, all right? People say, oh, do you believe in prosperity? Do you believe in healing? Do you, listen, where there is life, there is prosperity. Where there is life, there is healing. Where there is life, there is abundance. So all those stuffs we want to argue about. Now, prosperity is not the same as materialism. So people have jumped into materialism thinking that's prosperity. But prosperity is prosperity. Prosperity is still lavish. There's no how you want to contain it. All right? It's, it's, it's la- there's a lavishness about prosperity. All right? Doesn't mean it's waste. It's just lavish. You know, Jesus, when you know he asked Peter to get into the boat, and catch some fish, Peter could have just caught enough that was just fine, but there, there was a spillover. He had an abundance. By the time you check the descriptions of, of heaven in Revelation, you're like, this is this is splendor. And <laughs> this is heavy. This is great. That's not materialism for God. It's just everyday wealth. No big deal about it. If I have two eyes, I have two eyes. I'm not being lavish having, <laughs> having two eyes. It's just there, all right? So it's, it's an abundance. There's an abundance about the things of God. And that's why when they left Egypt, Bible said they left with gold and silver. God just believes in abundance. He also believes in recompense. They had labored for many years and he had told Abraham that that was going to happen. But let's stay on this. So I need us to see, see that there is a resurrection, a new life. So we're going to move into the sixth verse now in the Amplified, Ephesians 2 and verse 6. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit together. Watch this. Giving us joint sitting with him. So it was a joint resurrection. It's a joint sitting. It's not, oh, you sit there. And you're sitting over there and then, yeah, she put, put her over there and then put them there. And no, we were raised up together, made to sit together. So there's a union about this thing. There's a union about it. it it's, it's, it's just so beautiful. All right. It's beautiful. And this is now why we're teaching you. This is what we need to wake up at Colossians chapter three from the first verse. Colossians 3, 1. And I, I just trust that you're following, so please let's let's follow. Colossians chapter 3, 1. And then we move into, yep. If you then be reason with Christ, seek those things that are above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. If you be reason, and all of us, we just saw in Ephesians chapter 2, we are reason with him. So if you be reason with him, Seek the things that are above where Christ is. See that at the right hand of God. Verse two, please. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. All right, verse three now. Let's let's move into verse three. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. There's a union. There's a union about you. And I love, I love verse three. I love verse, I mean, verse four. (laughs) I love verse four. All right, verse 4 now says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, we will appear with him in glory. There's a sameness. There's a union. It's not Christ is going to be your life. Christ is your life right now. Today, why? You resurrected together. His life is your life. 
His existence is your existence. His capacity is your capacity. But he's saying from verse one again, if you were reasoned together with him, set your mind there. If you were reasoned together with him, set your mind there. If you were reasoned together with him, let's see it in the message transition. That's from verse one to verse three, all right? Um, this same Colossians um, chapter three, message translation. All right, thank you. So if you are serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides, okay? Verse, you know, verse two, watch this now. He says, don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. And, and, and it's the truth, all right? These things are able to catch us distract us all right take us away from what our primary focus ought to be so he says don't shuffle along eyes to the ground absorbed with the things right in front of you look up and be alert to what is going on around christ and that's where the action is see things from his perspective so if he says he's given us a gift of life, let's get into the word and find out what it is. If he says he's given us gift of life, let's let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. Let's 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 see the next two verses still. Oh, thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Your old life is dead. Your new life, I love this, which is your real life. Your old life is dead. Your new life. This is your real life even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. I mean, so this is super amazing. So we've been able to build again from Romans chapter 3, 6, 23, and that's how we go here. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And Jesus took away the wages of sin. He died our death. He died our death. But it's not a half and half kind of thing. He didn't die our death and then leave us hanging. He died our death and then he gave us the gift of eternal life. All right. He died our death and then he gave us the gift of eternal life. So you might want to say that he died my death. He gave me the gift of eternal life. Jesus died my death and he gave me the gift of eternal life. Jesus died my death and he gave me the gift of eternal life. Jesus died my death and he gave me the gift of eternal life. Super important, super, super important. Let's see again, you know, in John 20, what I referred to us yesterday as the mini gospel, where I said some call it the mini gospel, where John, you know, was talking about the reason why he wrote his epistle. I mean, I mean, his gospel, and then we'll see, you know, why he wrote his episode. John 20, we read 30, and then we read 31. The mini gospel, why did John write what he wrote? He said, but these things, all right? And many other signs truly did Jesus, or did Jesus, in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Many other signs he did, but they are not written in this book, all right? But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life in his name. These things are written, all right, that you might believe that Jesus Christ, Son of God, and that believing you, so this is why he wrote. This is what, this, this is the gospel. This is, as far as John is concerned, you need to know that there's such a thing as the gift of life, all right? You need to know, you need to know she need to know. And that's what we saw yesterday in John. That should be 8, now 47. All right. He said, he that believeth had eternal life. All right. No, that's 6, 47. He that believes has it. For, because John is saying this is why he came. This is why he came. All right. So let's see First John. Yeah, thank you. 6, 47. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believes on me. And John, John clearly talked about it from chapter 1 in the beginning and, and he got into you know in him was life and and john kept on just pumping us with the reality of the gift of life reality of the god kind of life reality this is the gift of life 
being alive and waking up every day is not the gift of life. Anyone who's just waking up every day without receiving Christ Jesus, he's not alive yet. He or she does not have the gift of life. All right. So let's see 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. 1 John 5, 13. We'll come back to it. Or maybe now that I'm there, we could just as well see it anyway. But it's it's still in, you know, a process I'm following. This thing. So now, you know, he told us earlier why he wrote the gospel of John. Now he's telling us why he's written the epistle of John. These things have I written unto you that believe. All right. So talking to people like us who believe. All right. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. All right. One is you already believe, but two is that it may be established in you. All right. That's, that should be simple enough. These things have I written unto you that believe on the Son of God, on the name of the Son of God, that you may know. I want, I'm writing, and, and that's the thing. So the, 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 the large percentage of the body of Christ is yet to know, all right? The large percentage of the body of Christ is yet to know that we have eternal life. We're yet to come into the terms. We're yet to enter that reality and say, hey, I have eternal life. I have eternal life. I have eternal life. John's written to me so that I may know. I've read the writings of John. Now I know. Glory to God. Glory to God. Isn't that beautiful? John wrote to me so that I may know. I've read it, John. Now I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I like that. I'm going to say it one more time. John wrote it so that I may know. I've read it, John. So now I know. Now I know. Now I know. I know that I have eternal life. I know that I have eternal life. I know. I know. I know. That, and this is our fighting ground, guys. We need to put our foot down because John, you know, okay, let, let's just do the message again. Yeah, I need it. I'll need it. Um, I need it at this point. The, you know, that, that 12th, 13th verse, you know, message. These things, all right, my purpose in writing is simply this, that you who believe in God's son will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life. The reality, that that's reality there, um, should be right. I guess it's a little typo somewhere. All right. You know, beyond, he wants us to know beyond the shadow of a doubt. And that's why John is right. I want you to know unequivocally. I need to know without, without doubt. I have eternal life because the devil would want to cheat us. He want to steal from us. He want to kill, destroy. But you fight him with the revelation. You fight him knowing I have eternal life. I have eternal life. I have you, you fight him with that thought. You fight him with this understanding. I have eternal life. I put my foot down. I put my foot down. I have eternal life. Praise God. So this is super important to us. All right. So just run up again. Now, why is eternal life so important? And why is this revelation important? Because there are different types of life, you know, kinds as it were. So we have what you could call the plant life or animal life all right, which is evident all around us. And then there's the animal life, all right? Then, of course, we have the human life. But this life, this eternal life is not human life. Waking up every day, going to bed is human life. What we're talking about is the gift of eternal life that God comes to give us, all right? It's a divine life. It's, it's life has, as God has it. Okay, that, that, that's what this thing is. This is life as doesn't, you know, you don't become father God. You become a son of God walking in a fullness. You know, and then the totality of your capacity as a son. All right. You walk in a fullness. You walk in a totality of your capacity as a son. That uh, sounds like, oh, it sounds simple, but it's not. Jesus walked in heaviness. I mean, not heaviness. I mean, he walked, his, his move on this earth was heavy. That's, that's what I'm communicating. He walked in a high level of authority, of power, of grace, such as never been seen before. And what was he? Son. So when we look at him being the son, we have the picture of who a son is and what's expected of a son, all right? You can't get promoted above being a son. Yeah, that's who you are. 
you know, yeah, maybe in church and units and departments and all of that, you'll see you handle this, handle more, take more, take more. But the highest place we all could ever be, and that's where we are, we're sons. All right. All we now need to do is now grow in our revelation of what it is, grow in our manifestation of it, because the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of sons, not apostles, prophets, evangelists, sons. All right. Now, some now understand the sonship revelation, but in to the detriment of other things. And then they say, hey, we don't need apostles, prophets. No, no, we, we, we it's, it's the same Bible. It's the same Paul who wrote in Romans, the whole world waits for the manifestation of sons. It's the same Paul who wrote Ephesians and says he gave gifts unto men, gave some to be apostles, prophets, you know, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, that we all may keep growing to the fullness of the son. That's the aim. That's the aim of ministry gifts. That's the aim of Bible teaching, Bible study, that we may all grow and keep growing and keep, you know, understanding our rights and privileges as sons, all right? So I hope that's clear. So I said there's a plant life, there's an animal life, all right? There's a human life, but then there's a divine life. What we receive in Christ Jesus is the divine life, guys. It's, it's, and it's, it's right there. Everyone born again has it, whether we're aware of it or not. Everybody has it. So yesterday we ended up, you know, we ended talking about the life circle and then the dirt circle and then the dirt circle and then the life circle, whichever one you put first in your note. And I said, please write death and life. And note this, please. Death, this death is spiritual. So also is this life. And this death makes everything to die. This life makes everything to live. Sounds so simple, but this is it, guys. This is it. Death makes everything die. Life makes everything live. I'll say it again. Death makes everything die. God told Adam in Genesis, the day you eat of this, you will die. All right? The day you eat of this, you will die. And then Adam did eat of it. And death set in. But we don't see a physical death. Adam didn't fall down dead. Neither did Eve. They lived <laughs> over 900 years. They lived. It took that spiritual death, that amount of time to catch up on their bodies or catch up with their bodies. Or it took their bodies that amount of time to catch up. All right. It took it. Took it, it took spiritual death that length of time to grab a hold on man. Because man wasn't wired for it. It was set in motion. And that's why you find a lot of evil things to happen, happening. All right. Cain killing Abel and all evil murder, lying. And, you know, everything came in. The curse, the ground started bringing out thorns. And, you know, things became difficult. It wasn't the plan of God from the beginning. Even the earth began to react. It was not the plan of God from the beginning. And then we see, you know, you know, the age that people live by, it just keeps getting shorter and shorter. It's, it's, it's death at work. It's spiritual. However, the effects are seen in the physical things. You see it all around. All right? The heart of man being desperately wicked. And it, it's death that is at work. None of that happened in the garden. Is that knowledge of good and evil? It's not a knowledge. It is an experience of good and evil. Adam, do not partake of it. You, If you partake of it, you're opening a door to death. And then, boom, it's not, oh, so, you know. The, <coughs> excuse me. You know, Lucifer was saying, the, the serpent was saying to Eve, uh, if, if you eat it, you become wise. No. <laughs> To me, it, it wasn't wisdom. No, it, it was a trick. And, and that's where the trick is. Like we're saying yesterday, you know, when he took Jesus up that mountain and said, if you jump down, no, no not to jump down. But, all right. All of this glory has been given to me. If something is false, you would easily know, oh, this is a lie. But then what, what the devil does is to deceive. So he brings truth. But then there's a lie somewhere around there. There's a deception somewhere around there. There's a fault somewhere around there. All right? He doesn't give you the rest of the story. So he says to Jesus, 
all this I've been giving to me and he was correct and I'm handing it over to him. I will give it to whoever I will. You bow down, you worship me. But then even in the law, God, I told him, worship no other person except from God, right? And that's, you know, Jesus told him that. So, but the deception is, if I give you this, I'm actually going to take from you. He, he won't discuss that part with you. He just says, I'll give you this. Do you want bling, bling, bling? And they're like, oh my goodness, I want the bling, 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 bling. And then you get it and then you lose every other thing. So imagine what Jesus would have lost, what the devil could never have given to him. Because Jesus came to give us something. Imagine someone who came to give us something, now collecting something from someone else. We're gone. So he tells Eve, listen, this thing will make you wise. And Bible said Eve looked at it and saw that this is something that will make her wise. No, he wasn't going to give you wisdom. Like, you're not going to sit down like, hmm, now I know good and evil. Hmm, so this is good. Hmm, so this is evil. No, this thing is going to give you the experience of the good. It will bring you into an experience of good and evil. You're going to come into it. You're not going to just know about it. No, you're going to experience it. And the door opens, it was death. How else are you going to know evil? If something has to die. Things have to go horrible. All right. God made man and everything was good, 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 good. Death says, no, it's not complete. Let's come in and make. And God says, this disobedience is going to open the door to a knowledge of good and evil. You have good. That's going to open it and it will become good and evil. Just stay where you are and keep getting blessed and just love and enjoy yourself. All right. So, Adam and Eve, all right, in opening the door, death came in. So Romans 5, 12 again. And, and for me, Romans 5, 12 never gets old. I mean, nothing ever gets old, all right? So but Romans chapter 5 and, and the 12th verse. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered the world and death entered by sin. Watch this. So death spread upon all. All men, for all have sinned. Did you get that? Through one man, sin entered the world. Death entered through sin. So death spread upon everybody. So we say there's a death circle. There's a life circle. So death is on all men. How do we get out of it? Moses shows up, gives them the law. They can't keep the law. So there's the priesthood. All right, did you get that? They can't keep the law. There's a priesthood. So the priesthood covers them, protects them, preserves them. All right, they mess up some ugly king and somebody just come and carry them away. They remember God. Oh God, remember our fathers, remember the sacrifice. Da, 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 da. And God, hey, rescue, rescue, rescue. You know, all of that. All right. So there was a law and then the priesthood. Are you getting this? Death spread on all men. So during the time of Moses, because there was a law and particularly the priesthood, the influence of death was slowed down. Where Israel is concerned, not all over the world. So I like to describe it this way. When Adam, all right, you, you've heard it said, all right, it's raining cats and dogs, all right? So let's just say it's raining curses, all right? And, and, and what death, all right? According to you, you know, during 29. So let's say it's raining, it's raining. If you're in the house, no matter how heavy the rain is, if you don't have leaky roofs or, or something, you're cool. If you're going to go under the rain, you need an umbrella. All right. So let's see it this way. So let's assume the law and the priesthood that Moses provided was like a canopy over Israel. It didn't stop the rain, but it puts them under the canopy, under the umbrella. So Moses is saying, if you obey the law, you remain under the umbrella. If you disobey the law, we're going to tilt the umbrella off your head. Guess what's going to happen? The rain. And what was raining? Cats and dogs. But in this case, curses and death. So we see Deuteronomy 30 and 19. So let, let's see that. So Bible says, uh, yeah, we'll come, we'll come back to Romans. So Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. So I told you, right, death and life or life and death. And then note that the life there is spiritual. 
the death there also is spiritual. They are spiritual, but their effects can be seen in the natural, all right? Sickness, lack, accidents, all of that, death. Death is spiritual, but it has effects in the natural. Life, increase, abundance, prosperity, favor, protection, provision, all right? They're there. It's spiritual, but the effect can be seen in the natural. So Moses says, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. So where there is life, there are blessings. Where there is death, there is the curse. Did you get that? Where there is life, we have blessings. Where there is death, we have the curse. So from the beginning in Genesis, life is available. God said, let there be, let there be. That's life. How do we know? John chapter 1. Right in him was life, the life it was a light of man. All right, so we see that life was available, and God is pronouncing blessings on man. Oh, he's creating and things are good, and let them have dominion. And and life, life is ministered to man. And I mean, he even you know, there was a breath of life, and so there was life all around, and then there was a tree of life. I mean, the, this man was surrounded by life, but once again, there was a choice that tree, this tree choose one and he went for one tree all right all of that it's not particularly stated that way but the two trees were there like i said yesterday and we were told we're only told don't eat that one there was nothing about don't eat this one he was going you know if that one you say hey you shouldn't go to this one so now moses now comes and says life and death so the the the, the, the circle has been there all right the circle has been there but Moses was able to provide an umbrella. So let's go back to that Romans chapter five and then maybe, maybe NLT, something NLT. As, um, let me simplify it a bit. Romans five and 12. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans five and 12. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone. I mean, guys, this is ugly. Death spread to everyone because everybody sinned. Ooh. All right, next verse, please. Verse, verse 13. Thank you, Lord. All right. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break. The law is actually the knowledge of sin, all right? With the law comes the knowledge of sin. Verse 14. Watch this. Still, everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. He, he put a time gap somewhere there. Everybody died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. Even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now, Adam is a symbol or a representation of Christ who was yet to come. Why did he say from time? He could have said everybody died from Adam till now. But he said from Adam till Moses. Why? Moses provided an umbrella. So the influence of death wasn't strong. God, God did that in the, I mean, the ministry of Moses was supernatural, guys. Remember what happened in Egypt versus Goshen? There is light in Egypt. There's darkness in Goshen. There's death in Egypt. Goshen is saved by the, the, the blood they put on the lintels. There are frogs all over Egypt. None in Goshen. Boil and everything. None in Goshen. Flies, water turning red. No, I mean, it was just life and death. These guys got into the wilderness, guys. Their clothes never wore out. A manifestation of the life of God. It, it, it was, it's, it, that, the life of God is so strong, it affects wear and tear. You could imagine, because people wonder, do we grow old in heaven? There's no wear and tear in the kingdom of God. None. Nothing grows old in the kingdom of God. Nothing is fruitless. Everything is fruitful. Everything is buoyant. Everything is beautiful. Everything is blessed. Life. 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 That's what it is. Life. Life. Glory to God. Life. Where there is life, everything flourishes. So I said, death makes all things die. Life makes all things live. All right. So it's, it, let, let's see that again. It says, everyone died from Adam to Moses. So death brought death. <laughs> death he, he brought physical death he brought sickness but every ugly thing still everyone died from the time of adam to the time of moses even those who did not disobey all right an explicit commandment of god as adam did now adam is a symbol of representation of christ who was yet to come verse verse 15 now but there's a great difference between adam's sin and god's gracious gift 
for the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death, guys. He brought the sin of Adam, brought death to many. Death, spiritual. All right, this is why men who go to hell is a spiritual death, but it has physical consequences, physical impact. So the sin of Adam brought death to many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many, all right, through this one man, Jesus Christ. So there's the death and then there's a gift of God, all right? Now that gift is righteousness, but I say it is also life, but not sure it really might enter today. Let, let's go, all right? Um, verse 16. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of one man's sin. Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to being made right with God, even through, even though we are guilty of many sins, all right? Verse 17, of course, that guilt is where we're still not guilty if you receive, all right? Watch this. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. Death reigned as a king, all right? It caused death to rule. Death affects our prayers. Death affects our planning. Death, I mean, I, 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 I will be there next year by the grace of God. I mean, some say it out of sincere, you know, if God, God willing, God, but just some say it out of, I don't even know if I'll be dead or alive by then. Death has entered our language. Death has entered our thinking and our pattern. It has entered our plannings. That, that has infuriated. I mean, it, it's just entered everything. It's, it's um, infiltrated, rather. Death has infiltrated into most of our life and living. So death reigned. It, watch this. It now says, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and the gift of righteousness for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through Jesus Christ. Allah. Let, let's read the Amplified Classic here. This the 17th verse. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So death reigned, death like king. That, you know, if that says you're not going, you can't go. If that says you're not going to make it through, you don't make it through. All right? That says you're stopped, you're stopped. That says you're not waking up, you're not waking up. That reigned. But that reign of death is over. Hallelujah. For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, Death reign through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace or merited favor and free gift of righteousness, putting them in right standing with God. Watch this now, watch this. They will reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. This is a comparative verse here. If for if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reigned. I, I want you to watch who is reigning now. I want you to watch this. This is very important. This is very important. Please stay, 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 stay with me on this. All right. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigns. So that's like king. Hey, you can't go. You can't come. You can't go. You can't come. You know, you're trying to travel to go see auntie. No, pff, you're dead on the way. All right. That, that just reigned. That there's a whole death. Oh, that may I go? May I come back? Oh, that. That reigned through the one. Watch this. Much more. Those who receive God's overflowing grace or merit of favor and the free gift of essence, putting them right in with God, will reign. He didn't say the way death reigned, that's the way Jesus will reign. This is not a comparison or, you know, between Jesus and death. It's not, oh, death has reigned. Now Jesus wants to come and reign. Jesus wants to reign. Jesus wants to reign. Everybody taught this, you know, many years ago. And I said, there's a new king in town and his name is not Jesus. You know, someone has stood it and some did it. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean by that? You know, I remember I told him by telling me, oh, he said this somewhere. People were almost like going to attack him. I'm like, hope you explained what you were saying. You know, but please let's see that verse. It is not a, a you know, it, 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 it's not about death versus Jesus. It's the same way death reigned. That's how you now should reign. It means you are now in charge. You are the new king in town. Yeah, you are the king on that. Jesus, the king, all right? But he's put you king over at least your own life, your own domain. So it's time to reign, all right? Much more, they that receive God's gift, you know, putting them right with God, will reign as kings in life through the one man Jesus. So our reigning is through Christ, but you are the one to, it's time 
for you to reign. It's time for you to say in the name of Jesus, Satan, I take authority over you. I take authority over your messing around with my mind. I take authority over you messing around in my home. I take authority over you. You take authority. You take authority. Death has reigned. Now you reign. All right. In the name of Jesus, we refuse to fear lack. In the name of Jesus, we refuse to fear shortage. In the name of Jesus, we refuse to fear sickness, disease, or death. In the name of Jesus, we refuse to fear. We refuse to fear because we have life. We have eternal life and we reign. We rule. We rule. We reign. Glory to God. We reign. We rule. Hallelujah. We, that, that's what happens to us. All right. We put our foot down and we say, this is how it's going to be. We put our foot down. And this it is an exercise of faith. They train. You say, oh, but I tried saying it three weeks ago. Nothing happened. You say, you stay there. Because that guy wouldn't just want to, you know, <laughs> you know, roll over and play dead and like, you know, have your way, have your way. I know, you, you know. I mean, Jesus was sleeping on the boat and there was still a storm. So Jesus could have said, ah, does the storm not know I'm here? Come on, does the storm not know I'm here? Storm, don't you think I'm here? No, I mean, peace be still. The storms will come. The storms will come. But you and I would need to be aggressive. We need to take a stand. So we take a stand in the name of Jesus. We take a stand over every satanic manipulation. We take a stand over any satanic operation. We take a stand. All right, and sometimes that stand means you change an action, you change a habit, you change something, but we take a stand in the name of Jesus. We take a stand. Glory to God. So the way death has reigned now, you reign. Who is reigning? You. You say, well, Jesus is reigning. You reign. We, we've we sung so many praise and worship songs, so on how he's reigning, and, and he wants you to sing songs that would at least remind you that you to reign, you reign, because when you reign, then he reigns well. Don't forget, he, 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 the Bible says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your foot. So, so he seated, yeah, we're seated with him, but we also, the church has the foot, all right? We are the body with the foot. So we are the ones to put our foot on the enemy's neck. So we are the ones, and we say, Lord, you, you chill, right? You just hold on on the throne, you know, thank you. The Lord said to my Lord, see that my right hand till I make your enemies your foot. So we reign over. We reign. We are the ones to know what I said in you know, all authority in heaven and on earth. I mean, given unto me. Therefore, you go into the world and preach God. So go how? With all the authority. He said, these signs will follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils, you know. They will speak in tongues. They will take up serpents. They will drink any deadly thing. They will not hurt them. They lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. It, it, that's how he will reign by us. Reign in. So he wants you to reign, reign, R-E-I-G-N, reign. Jesus wants you to reign, R-E-I-G-N. You reign as a king. You reign as a king. You, you reign as a king. You reign as a king. You reign as a king in your domain. And kings have domain. That's why it's called kingdom, the king's domain, his dominion, his realm. Your home is your realm. Your finance is your realm. Your marriage is your realm. Your health is your realm. Your kids, it's your realm. You might not be able to get up from there and go to your neighbor's house, all right, to go reign where there's no responsibility, there's no authority, but you're responsible for your life. Take authority in the name of Jesus. Take authority. Take authority in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's not about the shout. If you need to raise your voice when you need to have to find, but it's the authority in the name of Jesus. You know, it's, it's that grit, that, you know, that grit, that bulldog hold, that, ah, that grit, that you, you grab it, you hold it. Like I'm, I'm not letting this thing go. I'm not allowing this thing just fall down. You, you know, sometimes you just, you're, you're just sitting on your own and thoughts of failure come. Thoughts of you're not going to make it. It's not going to work. How are you going to survive? Where will the money come from? Would it thing really work? Will the people really? I mean, the thoughts will try to bump, but you have that grit. You're just silent. You don't have to be noisy about it, but it's a grit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes even just one bust of thank you, Lord, could have so much meaning with it or in, you know, in it that the people around you might not know what it is. They don't know that it was, his, it, was he, it was a shield of faith knocking all the fiery darts of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Because rather than meditate on what the enemy is sending to your mind or what the carnal mind is sending up or what, you know, what fear might be pushing up on you, you choose to meditate on the goodness of God and you go, thank you, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you win. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is a victory, child of God. This is a victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. Uh, even your faith. So there is a death circle. How did he come in? Adam opened the door and death swung in. And death spread upon all men. And death reigned as king. All right. But then there is a life circle. So the same way, there are two Adams, all right? The first Adam brought in the death circle. The next Adam introduced the life circle. He said in John 10, 10, I have come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. He came to give us life. And anyone who is in Christ Jesus, John chapter 5, let, let, let's see John chapter 5 and 24. Oh, glory to God. There is a death circle. There is a life circle. Did you, did you, did you go back to read Jeremy 28 yesterday? Did you, did you, did you? All right. We could just pick a few other places today and just... Thank you, Lord. But John 5, John 5, 24, because I wanted us to read the whole of Jimmy, you know, anyway yesterday. All right, John 5, 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him who sent me has everlasting life. He has it, all right? Has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is past from death to life. Oh, hallelujah. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Remember the child again, the, the, the life and death. And then under life, you have blessing. Under death, you have curse. So right under that, what do you want to put there? Where would you put promotion, increase, provision, blessings, fruitfulness in body, in hell, in ground? Well, you, it's life, right? What would you put accidents and premature death and all that? It's death. So it says, verily, verily, I say to you, he that hears my word, and believes on him that sent me. This just means born again, all right? He that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life. I told you yesterday, believing is not an end in itself. Believing leads you to having. Like we saw, you know, in John 6 and 47, he that believeth has. So don't just stop at I believe, I believe. Haven't believed you got something. This is what you got, all right? He that believes on him that sent me has everlasting life. Could you say here, I have everlasting life. I have everlasting life. I have everlasting life. I have, you have. To have there means to possess. I have everlasting life, all right? I have it. He now says he will not come into condemnation. The word condemnation here is not a guilty feeling, it's a sentence, a judgment. When Adam fell, all right? When Adam sinned, man entered into condemnation. Man entered into judgment. So that sent, it was a death sentence, all right? I think that's clear a death sentence was passed up on all men. So we fall ill, we fall sick. Why, why are these things just going on? Why are these things? Because it's a death sentence. It's a death sentence. So he said, he that heard my word and believe on him that sent me has everlasting life. All right, you have it. Let me put up that verse again, please. You have everlasting life. You will not come into condemnation. The, the opposite of condemnation is justification. And these are legal terms. So it says you will not come into condemnation. When man sinned, there was a death sentence, condemnation. Like when the judge goes, bam, all right? Sentenced to, you know, life imprisonment, boom, you know, a lot of that. So man was sentenced to death. The soul that sinned shall die. Sentence, that's the sentence. But the opposite of that is justification. And we saw in Romans 5, through one man's condemnation came through another man, justification to be justified means to be discharged to be set free to be cleared of all the charges against you you're like free you're acquitted all right so we are no longer set. so it's not a oh i did something wrong i'm feeling bad no it's a sentence of death it is why evil you know is all over the earth so i now say no i do no longer i no longer come into condemnation you could say it's a sickness no sickness it can't be on me because i'm not in condemnation anymore I don't know, gonna come into condemnation. But what happened? I have passed from death to life. I have passed from death to life. I have passed. Two things now. Number one, life is my possession. Number two, life is my location. Do you understand that? 
Life is my possession. Life is my location. Can you see that there? I have it on a life, all right? I will not come into condemnation, but I have passed from death into life. So I have life as a possession. It's my possession. I have life. It's mine. Now, I have passed from death into life. Life is my new location. Do you understand that? All right. When you're in a place that is raining, it's raining. You're in the rain. You're where it's raining. When you're in a place where it's not raining, it's not your location. So where am I now? I'm in the realm of life. So I need to think from that perspective. Like Colossians 3 says, you need to see things from that perspective. I've passed out of death. So sickle cell, you cannot follow me from death into life. Me, I passed out of you. All right. I've passed out of death. Sickle cell is death. I've passed out of death into life. Are you getting that? I passed out of, you know, whatever the disease might be, whatever the condition might be, even stuff you've not been able to share with anybody. Whatever that thing is, you've passed out of it. All right. Let me put this way, guys. Walk out on the devil. All right. Walk out on the devil. Why? Because the gate's been open. The gate's been open. All right. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, say it <laughs> for you to get it. But you're not actually to walk out. But I'm saying the same way Paul says, put on and put off. All right. He says, put on the new man. So I'm saying, walk out. Walk out on him. It's be conscious of, I've passed from this thing. Why, why am I hanging around it? Walk out on the thing. Why am I allowing this sickness to lock around me for so long? Why, why am I allowing this situation to, to hang around? Walk out on this thing in the name of Jesus. I refuse this. I refuse. I refuse a life that keeps going round and round in circles and not making a headway. I refuse it. I refuse it in the name of Jesus. I've passed out of death into life. You want to say that? I've passed out. I've, I've passed out of death. I have. I've passed out of death into life. I have passed out. I've, if you want to start mentioning whatever it is, go ahead. I've passed out of sickness and disease. I've passed out into health. I've passed out of weakness. I've passed into strength. Hallelujah. Just whatever it is you need to say, whatever it is you need to mention, I've passed out of death into life. I've passed out of death into life. I've passed out. I have. I have. Come on, walk out of that thing. In the name of Jesus, the hold you had on me, you have it no more. The hold you had on me, you have it no more. I pass out. Come on, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I passed out of death into life. Glory to God. I passed out. I've stepped out. I've stepped out. I've stepped out. I've stepped out. Thank you there, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I could give you one more minute on that. Let me just... Um, get to Deuteronomy. I just want to pick a few verses I still feel we could read. And then I've passed out. Glory to God. You're not talking tongues right here. Do that. I've passed out of death into life. I've passed out. I've passed out. I'm not a slave to sickness. I'm not a slave to sin. I'm not a slave, you know, to, you know, insomnia. I'm not a slave. No, 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 no. None of these things can control me. I've walked out on death. That is no longer my master. I've been delivered from the power of darkness and darkness is death, all right? And I've been transferred in the kingdom of his dear son and that son is life. You, you understand that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. I've passed out. I've passed out. So we, it will be good if we remind ourselves of these things. It will, it will be good if you could remind your friends, teach some people around you might need to be taught what this thing is. They, they need to be reminded don't don't let the devil cheat you. Don't 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 let the devil, don't let him cheat you. If you don't, you don't don't phew, come on. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. I, I'll just let me just pick. Let me just stay in the area of sickness and disease and deal with that. All right. So do you know me twenty eight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, verse 58, Jeremy 28, 58. Jeremy 28, 58. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Passed out of death into life. Hallelujah. All right. If you will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear his glorious name, you know, Glorious and fearful name, the Lord God, all right? So 
This, this next verse is interesting, all right? Then the Lord will make your plagues wonderful. I mean, when plagues are wonderful, right? Lord will make your plagues wonderful and the plagues of your seed, even great plagues and of long continuous, so sicknesses and of long continuous. So it's one thing to understand, which we read yesterday, fever and consumption and all of that. I mean, so that already is a curse. It now goes further to say there will be sickness again with long continuance so guys we fight against this thing this is just showing you the, the catalog of death all right i don't want the sickness i should even not want the one that has long continuance please let's see the amplified you know here 59 you know amplified 59 all right thank you okay amplified amplified classic same all right then the lord will bring upon you and your descendants extra ordinary strokes and blows great plagues of long continuance and grievous sicknesses of long duration so i don't want the short one so i'm not even going to take the long one i'm not going to take it i mean no and we have many people now getting used to that my sickness is back again that my issue is up again i've been nursing this thing for five years I've been fighting this thing for 10 years, for three and a half years. We'll, we'll, we'll have to put our foot down and fight and fight real bad. If we have to, but let's do it. And let's encourage one another, all right? Let's strengthen one another. Let's fight. Let's fight this thing. The Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary strokes and blows, great plagues of long continuous and grievous sicknesses of long duration it's it's horrible next verse all right we just sustain the amplified next verse moreover he will bring up on you all the diseases of egypt all right of which you were afraid and they will cling to you next verse thank you lord <laughs> thank you lord and they will cling to you and also every sickness watch this and every affliction which is not written in the book of the law will the lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. This is horrible. All right. So this puts it, <laughs> this puts it on an unending list. So it's as if we've tried to say the things we want to say. And we just say, guys, you know what? Everything that is not here is there. Because sometimes you're dealing with health and healing and then you don't know the name of whatever it is, and the doctors might still be confused. If, if the law could know well enough to say, even the things we did not name, just add them there. Even the signals that were not mentioned in the law will come. Don't you think when Christ took away all of these things, he knew that even the things that didn't have a name or things that are not named, he's paying the price for every single thing? If the law would say the things that are not included can still come upon you, how much more do you think just have gone further and say the things that are not mentioned have taken everything away? Glory to God. Glory to God. How much more? I refuse sicknesses and diseases. Much more. I refuse the ones that have long continuous. I don't want. I shouldn't have it. I don't want it. Neither should you. Neither. I mean, so let's encourage. Let's encourage ourselves and say we don't want it. We don't want it. We put our foot down and say, not anymore. So the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He's come to give us a gift. He's come to give us a gift. There is a gift. He, he brings that beautiful life and says, hey, whew, this is it. And Bible says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. What's the testimony? First John chapter five. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. I've passed from death to life. I've passed from sickness to health. I've passed from cursing to the blessing. I've passed. I've passed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5 and verse 9. I've passed. I've passed. I've passed from death to life. I've passed. I've passed from death to life. I've passed. I've passed. If I'm in a realm of death, then the things of death can happen to me. All right? Like, like Jeremy says, they can come upon you and overtake you. Why? Because that's where I am. I'm in their realm. But if I'm in the realm of a blessing, then death cannot come through the barrier of the blessing and jump on me. 
If I'm in the realm of a blessing, then a blessing will come upon me and overtake me. If I'm in the realm of a curse, then a curse will come upon me. And so question, where are we? We are in the realm of life. We've passed out of death. We've passed out of death. We've passed out of death into life. Glory to God. I've passed, I've passed. I've passed from death to life. I've passed. So something might have gone wrong in your life before now. Never mind. It won't happen again. Now you know better. Now you know better. I've passed from death to life. I've passed from death to life. I've passed. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Let, let's, let's read the verse. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. If we receive the witness of man, all right, the witness of God is greater. So if men have a testimony, God has a better one, all right? If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. Do you understand that? This is the wisdom of God, which is testified of his son. Verse 10. Hallelujah. He that believes on the son of God has that testimony, witness in himself. He who believes not God has made him a liar because he believes not the record that God gave of his son. So what's the record? What's the testimony? You know, what was the testimony? You, you know what? Let's, let's, let's go back to nine and then change to um, New King James. Someone might need that. Let's go back to nine and just change to New King James. Thank you, Lord. All right. Oh, still witness. All right. Um, NIV, NLT. NIV, NLT. Okay, no, no. This NLV. All right. And okay. Um, yeah, thank you. NIV. Thank you. Yeah. We accept human testimony. But God's testimony, so I, I want, you know, some might be saying, oh, witness, witness, hey, witness, testimony. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his son. So people are busy testifying. God says, I have a testimony. I have a testimony. So if we accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is a testimony, you know, of God that he gives about his son. Now, um, verse 10. Whoever believes in the son of God accepts his testimony. Whoever does not believe, all right, has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. So verse 11. Da, 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 da. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. Did you get that? This is the testimony. God has given you eternal life. So that, so when you say, oh God, oh God, oh God, God, why are you saying? God said, I have a testimony. I have given you eternal life. You know, it, it's like, like someone help me in person. I'll give you the key. I'll give you the key. I'll give you everything you need. In that word, eternal life is everything we need. I've given you, this is, God is screaming. God, you know, it's only saying, you know, life is like this and life is like that. And like God says, hey, hey, I got a testimony. I've given you eternal life. I've given you eternal life. I've given you eternal life. I have. <laughs> I've given it to you. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. Verse 12, glory to God. Hallelujah. Whoever has the son of God, whoever has the son, has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Do you have the Son of God? If you do, then you have this life of God. Then you have the testimony of God. And then you overcome with this testimony. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. It is the testimony. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> I have eternal life. I have eternal life. I have eternal life. I have passed from death into life. So light, life is my possession. He says, Christ is my life. So life is my life. 
I've passed from death to life. So life is my location. It, 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 it is. Like that, that, that's, I have it on our life. 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 I remember the 13th verse that we read earlier. John is saying, I wrote this thing to you so that you may know without a shadow of doubt that you have it on our life. I want you to know. I'm writing so that you will know. I want you to know I have it on our life. I have it on our life. Oh, I, I pray this blesses you as it's blessing me. I have it on our life. I have it on our life. I have it on our life. Let's ward off every form of sickness. We ward off every form of darkness. We ward off every form, everything that doesn't resemble our nature, that doesn't resemble who we are. I have it on our life. 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 Glory to God. He that has the Son has life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I have the Son of God. I have life. Why? Because I don't just have the Son of God. I am the Son of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm not Jesus, but you know very well that you and I are his brothers, all right? We've been brought in to family. First John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. I am his son. So it's a family, it's a, it's a family thing. It's a family thing. This is the testimony that God gave of his son, like we just saw in 1 John, 1 John 5. He said, whoever has my son has life. Why? Because that, that's, that's, you know, it's the family, it's the DNA in the house. First, I mean, John chapter 5 and verse 26. This is the DNA. It's the, so if you say, oh, I'm born again, I'm God's child, it means you have the life of God. Okay? There's a plant life, like I said earlier, there's the, the animal life, then there's a human life, but then there's a divine life, all right? So John chapter 5 and, and the 26th verse of John 5, 26. John 5, 26, for has the father has life in himself, so has he granted the son to have life in himself. So, so it's, it's the family thing. God has life. Jesus has life. Nothing dies around them. Nothing withers around them. Nothing ages around them. Jesus saw a girl sleeping. He said, yeah, me there. He said, she's sleeping. She'll wake up. I mean, he's not afraid of... Life cannot fear death. Light cannot fear darkness. It's the light that will shine in the darkness. And then the darkness cannot comprehend it the same way. When life appears, death is confused. And that needs to know what, what, what are they? Life, are you saying I should get up? Are you saying I should go? Are you? Because it's, it's life. How was Jesus able to multiply five loaves and two fishes? Life. Where there is life, there's surplus. Where there is life, there's abundance. All right? Is is life. Now, was he multiplying five loaves and two fish every day? No. Was he walking on water every day? No. Because God wants people involved in what he's doing. So Jesus had disciples. Jesus could have just stood someone on the mountain and said, everybody believe in me. And God had to tweak all their hearts and say, believe. But no, he wants us to preach the gospel. He wants us involved. All right? Jesus could multiply food. He helped Peter catch fish supernaturally, multiplied food, but then he still had people give to his ministry to partner with him. If you just say, no, 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 let's just always have a supernatural flow because there's a human involvement that the father loves. Oh, but I have life. It's a family thing. That same John 5, 26, as the father has life in himself, so has he given to the son to have life in himself. As the father has life in himself, so has he given to the son to have life in himself? As the father has life in himself, so has he given to the son to have life? As the father has life, and then the son has life. And guess what? Then the son came that you may have life. So it, it's a family thing. So we all stand together like a family, a family of divine life, carriers of the divine life. Share us in the divine life. God has given us a privilege to partake of his nature. 
It's a family thing. In John 11, 25, Jesus stood at the throne of Lazarus. I mean, well, before he got there, while he was still talking with Martha, Lazarus, his sister, he told her, I am the resurrection and the life. I mean, he was saying to her that your brother will rise up on the last day. And she was like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know, you know, whatever you ask the father, he'll do for you. He said, uh, you know, and I know you raise up. You know, she, 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 Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And she's like, well, I know, I know, I know. He just said, no, you're not getting what I'm talking to you about. You know, you're not getting what I'm saying. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. I am the life. It's who I am not trying to be. I am the rest. So he introduced himself as life. Earlier on, he had said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I mean, it's just, this is, this is just Jesus. Guys, this is just this is just Jesus. In fact, in 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 First John chapter one, from verse one, First John chapter one. Yeah, thank you. Fourteen six, thanks. You know, in, in First John, First John chapter one, from verse one. You know, it, it says that which was from the beginning, which we've heard, you know, which we've seen with our eyes, which we've looked upon, and our hands have handled. Watch this of the word of life. So he says, we handle the word of life. But suddenly he begins to talk about that life like a person. All right, verse two now, he says, for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested unto us. So he's describing Jesus. We handled him. We saw him. We, but you use that it because he's talking about the life of God. But then the life of God appeared in a person. Because the person is the life. So there's the life as substance. But the substance exists because there's a person from whom it emanates from. Oh, glory to God. 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 And God is the source of life. God is the source of life. God is the source of life. God is the author of life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. I have the life of God in me. 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 I have it. It's in me. It's in me. Glory to God. I have the life of God in me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God. So John is saying, hey, <laughs> this, we saw this life. We handled his life. We, we saw it. We touched it. Don't forget, as the father has life in himself, he gave it to the son to have life. And then the son came that we may have life. The father has life. He gave the son to have life. The son came that we may have life. The father has life. The son came that we may have life. So how do you know? How do you know that you have life? He that has the son has the life. I have the son. I have the life. I have the son. But God is the source of it. The life flows from the Father. The life flows from Jesus. And because the Father and Jesus are within us, then that life now flows from within us into everything and anything and everything. It just flows. If they put us in deserts, it will blow. It might take a while, but it will flourish. The desert will become beautiful. It will become, oh, hallelujah. Thank you there, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The life flows from them through us, touches everything around us, and blesses the world. Hallelujah. I mean, that there's how Jesus was described in Acts chapter 3 and the 15th verse. Oh, hallelujah. Acts, Acts, Acts 3, 15. Thank you, Lord. And, and I like how, you know, and, you know, <laughs> Peter was saying, you killed the author of life. Thank you. You know, the King James actually says the prince of life. So I, was, I thought we'd start from there. Now, and I'll show you that he's, he's a source. All right. You kill the author of life, but God raised him up from the dead. And we are witnesses of this fact, the, the author. So he, he's, called, he, he, he's called author of life, the, the prince of life himself. 
So life came from him. I'm going to John 4, and then I'll get to John 7. But before that, I want us to go to Psalm 68, 68, 68 Psalm, Psalm 36, Psalm 36. No, before Psalm 36. I'll show you something. Mm. Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Psalm 36, verse 8. Thank you. You shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of your house. They, rather, shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of your house. And you will make them drink of the river of your pleasure. So he's talking about God. So this is about us. It's prophetic. It's about us. You know, you, 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 you'll be abundantly. You know, Jesus was telling the woman in John 4, if you drink of this thing, you will never thirst again. You'll be forever satisfied. So he's talking about us. You'll be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of God's house. And he will make us drink from what? The river of his pleasure. Don't forget that. We're, we're going to drink from river of his pleasure. We're going to drink, guys. We're going to drink from the river of his pleasure. We're going to drink from. So there's a river. And then we'll drink from the river. Oh, we'll be satisfied. And this this describes like a fish, you know, some of those um is it medieval movies now where there's like <laughs> like is it they roast a whole cow or hog or something, put it on a table with turkey and everything, and they're eating and eating and eating and drinking and eating and drinking and, and, and then they, they they're just drunk. They are they are fed, they are they're but they're fed like but they are blessed. It's a blessing, it's it's a feast of the blessing. That's what this is describing. They'll be abundantly satisfied. Watch this with the fatness of your house. There's fatness. There's abundance. They will be satisfied with the fatness of your house. You will make them to drink of the river of your pleasure. So there's a river flowing in, and then we're drinking. Ah, oh, I mean, you can't drink from river of pleasure and not just be fine with your life and and then we have many of us as believers were depressed were hurt were you know we're just empty and and all about we're not empty because he that has the son has life has life has life has life the next verse the next verse the next verse the next verse and and it introduces god with a name he says for with you is the fountain of life and in thy light we see we see light some some versions use for with you is the fountain some say you are the fountain of life i'm trying to remember i i know i must have checked the number back then you know but you you are because god is he is he is the fountain he's the source he's the wellspring he is 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 the one from whom all life will flow as the father has life then he gets to the son and and why why does it come from him because he is the fountain in his light we see light he's the fountain he flows into us and then he influences us. Thank you, NLT. Okay, great, great, great. I wasn't sure which one. Is. All right, all right. For you are the fountain of life. You are. It's you. You are. You are. You are. You are the fountain. Hallelujah. You are. You are. Woof. You are the fountain. You are the fountain. You are. You are. You are. You are the fountain. You are the source of life. You are the author of it. You are the source of it. You had a fountain. You know, God, God was reprimanding them. You know, it was reprimanding them in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 2, you know, and the 13th verse. And I want you to see this. God is awesome. Hallelujah. He, he said the same thing twice to them. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. Jeremiah 2, 13. Ooh. Hallelujah. I said, for my people have committed two evils. Number one, they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters. Number two, they have hewn out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold, you know, no water. If you've ever read Ken Hagen's book, Plants, Purpose, and Pursuit, he made reference to this verse. Maybe read the book or listen to the tape. Made reference to this verse. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken, so I'm, I'm the authentic. But now they are going to hewn for themselves cisterns. Cisterns are reservoirs. You have, you have, you know, Building reservoirs that cannot hold water. What we're trying to create life and create things that are not real. We we have this pseudo existence, pseudo reality. So it's not real. He says, No, you have forsaken me, the fountain. I am the fountain, the fountain of living water. So Psalms, David called him the fountain of life. Here, God speaks through Jeremiah and says, You've forsaken me, the fountain of living water. Jeremiah 17 and 13. 
similar statement right here. I mean, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to show you guys something from my notebook, but it's, it's not here. Ooh, shatagabo, shatagabala. Yeah, I just want to give you a peep into some things that I'd, I'd, I'd written, you know, just show you one or two pages there. Thank you, Jeremiah. You know, oh, oh, oh Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake you shall be ashamed. They will depart from me. They that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living water. He's a source of it. He's a soul. Listen, any, anywhere the Lord is, there is life. Anywhere the spirit is, there is life because the spirit is life. The spirit has life as the father has life. Then, then the Jesus, the Lord has life. So obviously where you see the spirit, then the, the spirit has life. And, and they've come that you, it's, it's a family. The father is a source of it. All right. The Father is a source of it. It proceeds from the Father and, and, and it proceeds from the Son. And, and then they just minister this thing to us. And, and it's communicated to us through the Spirit. So He's the Spirit of life. He is. And, and that's why Romans chapter 8 and, and the second verse of Romans 8 says, For the law of the Spirit of life has set us free from, from the law of sin and death. Like John was saying, we've passed from death to life. So now he says, The law of the spirit of life, that that law, it has made us free from the law of sin and, de and death. So the power of sin and death, the control of sin and death has been broken because of the ministry of the spirit that gives life, the spirit of life, the spirit of the father, the, and the spirit himself is also the fountain. I mean, and the, you know, the father and Jesus and the spirit, like they are one. It flows from the father and, you just bust into the mighty river and the river of the spirit. And Bible says anywhere that river goes to, everything would live anywhere, 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 anywhere. Because water is a type of the spirit. And then we move from it just being water, you know, being a type of the spirit. We're now moving to understanding, oh, the water is the type. So the spirit is. Oh, hallelujah. There is life. There is life. There is life. There is life. There is abundance and flourishing. There is increase and grace. There is a life. There is life. I've been brought into union with divinity. I've been made a sharer, a partaker, a participator of their divine nature. I I am part of it. I've come into it. I'm in union. I'm in union with deity. I'm in union with divinity. I'm in union with deity. As my father has life. So has he given to me to have life? As my father has life, he has given to me to have life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So the spirit is life. The father is life. Jesus is life. The spirit is life. All right. So the law of the spirit of life, where Jesus made me free from love, sin, and death. Then the same Romans 8, then by the 11th verse, if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised up Christ from the dead will give life to your body by the spirit that lives in you. So the presence of the father is life. The, the presence of Jesus is life. Where he was, there, there, there was life. The, the leper came to him and there was life. And the woman with the issue of blood touched the helm of his garment. And instead of Jesus being, you know, unclean because a woman touched him and he should be unclean. And then the, the woman received life, not even from Jesus directly, but from the helm of his garment. There was just life. There was life all around him. He communicated it. He, he, he embodied it. It's an embodiment is, is low because he himself is the life. So the father is the life and Jesus is the life and the spirit is the life. So the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead to raise up means to give life. So if the spirit of him who gave life to Jesus, the body of Jesus, he raised it up, brought it back to life. So the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead lives in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead will give life. Give life to your mother body. Give life. Give life. 
by his spirit who dwells in you and that spirit the spirit of the father he lives in you so he gives life to you yes he gives life he he gives life he gives life he he gives life to your mortal body he that 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 tumor disappears that you know those things they disappear they dissipate he gives life he gives life he gives life he gives life he corrects our nerves and and corrects our systems and he gives life he gives life to our mortal body because this is, a, this is the gift of life. This is the gift of life where well, there's no longer fear of death or disease or decay because we have life. Where there is death, things die. Where there is life, things live. Where there is death, things die. I have passed from death into life the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. My father is the very fountain. Is the very fountain of life. He is the fountain of life. Glory to God. John, in, in John 4, you know, there's this classic conversation that, you know, ensued between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. You know, they were, you know, by the well, Jesus was there first and then she came and he asked her, for water, you know, and then Jesus begins to ask her, hey, um, give me water. And she said, hey, you being a Jew, you shouldn't ask me a Samaritan for water. So John chapter four, verse 10, I would love you to see verse 10. Oh, Jesus is just so awesome. He's, he's just so awesome. John, John four, you know, verse 10, please. So she said, you know, how would you, you know, ask me for a drink? You, you were a Jew, you shouldn't talk to me. Jesus answered and said unto her, if you knew the gift of God, oh yeah, oh really God, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me drink, you would have asked of him and he will give you living water. If only you knew the gift of God. And don't forget what discussing all through, this is John writing, John, the gift of God, talking about eternal life. It's what God gave you know, came to give us. And Jesus is saying to the woman, if only you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God and the person speaking to you, you will ask him, he will give you. He will give you living water. And the woman goes, oh, you know, let's just run through quickly. 11, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And the woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. From whence would you get the living water? And are you greater than our father Jacob that gave us his well? He now drank from it, he himself, his children and his cattle. Jesus has said to her, whoever drinks of this one, this one that you're talking about, he will thirst again. Verse 14, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you ready with me? Verse 14, whoever drinks of the water that I will give. Don't forget, he said in verse 10, you would have, you know, if you knew the gift of God and who is it that speaks to you, you would have asked and would have given you living water. So he's saying, whoever drinks of the living water that I will give will never thirst again. You have to take this back to the Psalms that we read. Because you make them satisfied from the fatness of the house. You make them drink from the river of your pleasure. You are the fountain of life. So because you drink from the fountain of life, something's going to happen to you. Because that fountain is a fountain of living water. Hallelujah. All right. Whoever drinks of the water that I will give will never thirst. But the water that I will give will be in him. A well of water springing up to everlasting. I'm going to give us about five versions are going to look at so this will be one all right so watch this the water watch this that i give shall be in him a well so you drink water then the water you drink becomes in you a well of water springing up to everlasting life springing up a well of living water that's what's going to become you so new king james tweak a bit then we start moving new king james i want to show you something watch this but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him, watch this, will become in him a fountain of water springing up. So I say, what's the difference? Fountain. You drank from the fountain and suddenly you got a fountain. Did you get it? Did you get it? You drank from the fountain, the fountain, the fountain. There is the fountain. You drank from the fountain, then you became a fountain. You drank from the fountain. Then you got, you know, excuse me, you got a fountain. 
<laughs> it will become in you a fountain of water springing up in you, in you. There's a word I'm going to introduce to you. It's a gotcha. That's the word, all right? We'll find it in TPT. We'll find it in message, all right? So we'll do amplified and we'll go to those two. We'll do amplified TPT MSG. I just want you to see something here. This is beautiful. Whoever takes a drink of the water, watch this, guys, that I will give him will never, no, never. Why? Because the never there is called a double emphasis. So it's never known. It can't happen. So when we're satisfied and uncomfortable and deep, it means we're not conscious of the water we have. When, you know, because the, the, the life we have has everything we ever need. The life, the life. And, and that's, that's a reality. All of us must keep reminding that this life, it has everything I need. It, Oh, but, but I need favor in that life. <laughs> oh, the beauty of God rests upon you so much. The call of God rise up from within you. Men will favor you. Men will. Why? Where there is life, things live. Where there is death, things die. So when people disappoint you, they don't favor you. They're hurting you. Something is dying. Something is not right. But the Bible says, when a man's ways will please the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. So when you have that favor of God, even those who don't like you will bless you. Even those who don't know you will bless you. Because you have the reefer of life. You would never thirst. No, never be thirsty anymore. But anybody still here with me? Are you reading with me, please? But the water that I will give him will become a spring of water. This is what I want you to see. It will become a spring, a fountain, a spring. It will become a spring. What's going to happen? It will be flowing. It will be bubbling continually within him unto, for, into eternal life. That means right where you are right now, all right, sitting, lying, driving, whatever it is you're doing, right where you are, there's a fountain of life within you. You feel it, you don't feel it. It doesn't deny its presence. There's a fountain of life within you is bubbling, it's flowing, it's bubbling, it's flowing, it's bubbling, it's flowing. There's a fountain, it's, it's continuous. There's no faucet. You can't turn it on and turn it off. However, you can turn it on and off for a flow into the circumstances of your life, but it's there. You can't turn it, it's operation off. It's it's there, it's there, but you can, you can activate. I think that might be the word because it's always there, bubbling, bubbling. It's, it's there. There's a well of water in you, flowing, bubbling continually within you. It's there in you, in me, unto everlasting life. Now, TPT, TPT, TPT uses Holy Spirit, so maybe I'll end with that. They both use Gosha. I like both of them. Um, all right, MSG, we'll end with TPT, MSG. All right, MSG, we'll end with TPT. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. So, so beautiful. Anyone, all right, who drinks the water I give will never thirst. Not ever. The water I give will be an Atesian spring within gushing fountains of endless life. I like the energy in that. Gushing fountains of endless life. An Atesian spring, you know, it's, it's a natural spring like fountains and all of that. Not fountain like you built a fountain from your house. No, it's, it's gushing out from the earth. It's, it's forceful, it's energetic, it's continuous. It's a natural spring, but it, it has energy. It's an Atesian spring gushing. So in you, in me, if, if, we, if it has a sound and if that's the sound, just that... Something's gushing. Life is gushing. So we might be weak. We might be sick. It's because we've not allowed, you know, by the renewal of our minds, we become transformed. We've not allowed our minds to connect to that activity within us. A gushing fountain. A gushing fountain. A gushing fountain. A gushing fountain of endless life. Hallelujah. Gosha again. TPT. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anyone who drinks the living water, I give them they will never thirst again and will be forever satisfied for when you drink the water i give you it becomes a gushing fountain of the holy spirit it becomes a gushing fountain of the holy spirit springing up and flooding you with endless life it becomes a gushing fountain of the holy spirit feeding could you could you say this with me in me is a gushing fountain of the holy spirit springing up and flooding me with endless life in me is a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit springing up, 
flooding me with endless life. In me is a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit, springing up, flooding me with endless life. In me is flooding me. You know the meaning of flood, guys. Flood, 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 flood. The streets are covered. You can't see the gutters anymore. It's running into your homes. It's co- so imagine that. It's flooding me, entering my health, entering my finances, entering, entering my family, entering, entering. It's flooding me. It's flooding me. In me is a gushing fountain. And the degree to which we allow it is that degree to which it floods us to the degree to which we meditate on it, to the degree to which we think about it, to that degree. And I've seen that many times in my life. You talk, think of it, little, it, it drops. You think of it more, it rises. And to the degree, to the degree, to the degree that we keep renewing our mind with it, it's filling us, it's flooding us. It's in me, in me, in me is a gushing fountain of the Holy Ghost. In me is a gushing fountain of the Holy Ghost. In me, in me is a gushing fountain of the Holy Ghost. Filling me, springing up, flooding me with endless life. It's springing up, it's flooding me with endless life. It's springing up, it's flooding me with endless life. It's springing up, it's flooding me with endless life. It's springing up, it's flooding me with endless life. It's springing up. It's flooding me with endless life. It's springing up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. In me, hallelujah. In me is a gushing fountain of the Holy Ghost. In me is a gushing fountain of the Holy Ghost. In me is a gushing fountain of the Holy Ghost. Springing up. Because the water is the spirit. I, uh... And then in John, in John, in John 7, you know, we could just jump straight to John 7 from the 30, just go straight maybe to 37, John 7, 37. We could just stay with New King James. John 7, 37. Maybe if, if you're praying in tongues where you are, if you're speaking to yourself where you are, keep at it. But John 7, 37. Hallelujah. On the last day, on the on the of a great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. Verse 38 now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 38. He that believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, you know, with belly, regular King James, will flow rivers. Don't forget, it was first a fountain filling you, flooding you. And and somewhat, the equation is complete. It has to be from the fountain to the river. It has to be, he says, out of your, you know, heart will flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, verse 39, verse 39. Verse 39 says, but this spake he concerning, you know, this is spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him will receive for the spirit was not yet given. because So that river is the spirit, all right? That river, and he said, as the scripture said. So when did the scripture say, let's run quickly to Ezekiel 37. I mean, Ezekiel 47. Don't forget, there's a, John, John, John 4 precedes, you know, Ezekiel 37. I'll just skip, just go straight to verse 9. You know, Ezekiel 47, rather, just go straight to verse 9. You, you could read from verse 1 on your own. So from verse 1, um, you know, f- from verse 1 anyway. So it, it was talking about the fact that water was flowing from inside the temple and then water was flowing out, you know, through the eastern gate of the temple and it flowed, you know, all out and out and out and then. And a, a man had a line in his hand and then he will measure a thousand cubits and it was water that got to the knee. And then thank you, you know, so if you can read fast, you could just read along, you know, he gave well. So he, then he measured another thousand cubits and he got to the knee and he measured another thousand cubits and he got to the waist and he got to another thousand cubits and it became water so large that you could not swim in it. You know, you can't cross it. You have to swim in it rather. So it's, it's deep water, but don't forget it grew in degrees. It, it grew in degrees. So the man took him back to the very bank of the river and said, have you seen this? That this water that is coming gradually from the temple becoming a mighty river, this water now flows into the Dead Sea. When it gets into the Dead Sea, the sea will come alive. I mean, this, this is beautiful. Thank you. Then he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region, goes down the valley, enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, it, its waters will be healed. Let's just jump straight to msg is just let's just stay with msg right here you know because he called it it was stagnant water all right it was it was stagnant uh water watch this he told me this water flows east descends to the arbor all right and then into the sea sea of stagnant waters 
when it empties into those waters, the sea will become fresh. That means this water, this living water can enter anything stagnant, stagnated life, stagnated health, stagnated whatever it is, because it entered into something stagnant, dead sea, where no animal could live, right? He entered into it and the sea became fresh. Next verse, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wherever the river flows, life will flourish. Don't forget, I said, where there's life, things live. And that's what's going on here. Once that river of life gets into the Dead Sea, Dead Sea comes alive. Wherever the river flows, life will flourish. Because the river is turning the salt sea into fresh water. Where the river flows, life abounds. Did you get that? Wherever the river flows, life will flourish. Where the river flows, life abounds. No matter how dead the thing is, once life gets there, it lives. The Father is life. Jesus is life. The Holy Ghost is life. And you are in that family. He that has the Son has life. Where the river flows, and the river, John 7, is the Spirit. So anywhere the Spirit is, and the Spirit is in you, Anywhere the spirit is, the spirit gives life. Anywhere the spirit is, there is life. There is life. And verse, verse 10 begins to talk about, I mean, verse 9, uh, of, of, of the fishermen will stand shoulder to shoulder, you know, we have 10, you know, from N get it to N and Glen, they'll cast a nets, you know, the sea will team with fish of all kinds. Let's just go straight to verse 12, straight to verse 12. I show you something in verse 12. All right, verse 12 tells us, but the river itself on both banks will grow watch this now on both banks of the river will grow all kinds of trees their leaves won't wither their leaves would never wither their fruit will never fail watch this every month they will bear fresh fruit because a river from the sanctuary flows to them did you get that the river is coming from the temple and it flows to them. Their fruit will be for food, the leaves for healing. We're going to read this one more time. But the river itself on both sides of the river will grow fruit trees. Their leaves will never wither. Their fruits will never fail. Every month they will bear fresh fruit because the river is coming from the sanctuary. Don't forget, John 7 says, out of your belly will flow. Belly there is innermost being, your heart, your spirit. And what's happening right there in your spirit? God lives there. Don't you know? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, you are the temple of God. Ezekiel 47, the river is flowing from the temple. God is the fountain of life in the temple. God and Jesus are in the temple and the river is coming from the temple. And where's the temple? Out of your belly will flow. So I'm the temple of God. I'm the temple of God. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. So the river is coming out of him through me and uh, but it has to fill me, John 4, and flood me, John 4, and then it breaks out gradually from inside me, filling me up like it happened in the temple in Ezekiel 47, and it starts gradually growing in deep, deeper dimensions out there till it falls into a great mighty river. Great mighty river. But Ezekiel, I mean, Ezekiel 47, you know, tells us in the ninth verse, wherever the river goes, Wherever the river flows, life will flourish. Where the river flows, life abounds. Wherever the river, anywhere the river flows, life will flourish. Great schools of fish. Fishes will come. Fishes that didn't exist before will start coming. Oh, they said you can't be pregnant. No problem. They said, they said, they said, no problem, no problem. Wherever the river flows, life will flourish. They said you can't, they can't, whatever it is they said, it can't happen. Schools of fish, the kinds of fishes they will find in the Mediterranean Sea will start happening in your life. The kinds of fishes, the kinds of abundance, the kinds of increase that was in the, if you check the map, the Dead Sea cannot in any way contest with the Mediterranean Sea in size. But it says there, you know, in, in, in it says great schools of fish because, and let's, let's look at the 10th verse. Let's go to the 10th verse, please. You know, the 10th verse, watch it. Fishermen will stand shoulder to shoulder from one shore of Engedi to all, all the way north in and glare. Casting the sea will teem with fish of all kind, like the fish of the great Mediterranean Sea. So the, the Dead Sea can't compete in size with the Mediterranean Sea, but it says when this river enters it, the Dead Sea will come alive, fishes will live in it, and the fishes will be of the great size, great kind as the Mediterranean Sea. Woo! They said you can't, but no problem. We're going to meditate on this thing, meditate on this thing, meditate on this thing, meditate on this thing, meditate on this thing. Where the river flows, life will flourish. 
Anywhere the river flows, life abounds. Where the river flows, life will flourish. Revelations 22. Revelations 22 from verse 1. Revelation, could just do New King James. Revelation 22 from verse 1. Go read of God. Wherever the river flows, life. I have eternal life. I have it. I have it. See, and, and because, you know, you would read Ezekiel and say, but that's Old Testament. That's all. I know, I know, I know, I know. But look at the same thing, the same thing in Revelation 22. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne again. The throne of God and the Lamb. The river is coming from there. Verse 2. Hallelujah. In the midst of the street, on either side of the river, was a tree of life that bore 12 fruit, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Same thing you read in Ezekiel 47. So it's not so, Ezekiel was seeing to the future. It wasn't the past. They are seeing into our time, the river of life, the water of life. Next verse. Oh, hallelujah. And there shall be no more curse. Don't forget where there is life, there can be curse. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, because it's revelation, I'm thinking about his future, his future, his future. No, John saw a vision, but I believe John was seeing a vision of what we have now. Why? Because the Jesus already, John already had written in John 7, out of your belly will flow. Where's the belly? The throne of God, the temple of God. Out of your belly will flow because God is within me. My belly, my spirit, my innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Rivers. And he says there will be no more curse, but the throne of God will be there. All right. And the lamb will be in it. And it's seven to seven. There'll be no more, no more curse. So this river will flow. And curses will be broken. This river will flow and stagnancy will be healed. This river will flow and things that are inconsistent in our lives will become consistent. This river will flow. This river will flow. And the beauty of God will be seen all over where the river flows. And this is beautiful meditation for you can connect them from John 4 to John 7 to Ezekiel to John to Romans to just connect it that this river of life is filling me, flooding me with eternal life. And, 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 and the same way, you know, like, you know, TPT puts it in that John chapter 4, verse 14, how that it's a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit. Gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit, springing up and flooding you with endless life. We could just end on that one. In you is a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit. In you, in you, you know, is a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit, springing up. What would this life do? It would clear the curse. It will clear anything that is inconsistent with the word of God. Anything that is inconsistent with a blessed life, it clears it out. Where there is life, there's the blessing. And where the river is, life will flourish. Life will flourish in me, through me. There's a gushing fountain of the spirit filling me, flooding me with endless life. Oh, hallelujah, springing up, flooding me with endless life. Flooding me with endless life. Flooding me. And he says, wherever the river goes, life will flourish. When you step into your business, <laughs> when you step into your place of work, life has come. You step into your home, life has come. Everything is not by calculation. When I do this, I'll get this. When sometimes it works, sometimes it can't work. And, and you don't, we, don't, we don't just go and raise up systems for ourselves. No, we, we draw from the fountain of life. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Hallelujah. For you are the fountain of life. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to be sharers in your divine nature. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. As you have life, you have given unto us. As you have life, you have given unto us. Oh, and in us is a bubbling, gushing fountain of the Holy Ghost springing up, flooding us with endless life. There's a gushing fountain of the Holy Ghost in us, Father. Oh, the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is energizing, vitalizing our bodies, vitalizing our circumstances. Things are coming to life. Hallelujah. Where the river is, there's life. Where the river is, there's life. Where the river is, we refuse the curse. <laughs> We refuse anything that looks like it. We refuse any level of stagnancy because this river gets into stagnant waters and they are healed. Any form of stagnancy, we say, no, we fight the fight of faith. We lay hold on eternal life. Tumors and sicknesses and, and, and whatever you are, 
we call you gone. We call you flushed out. In us is a gushing fountain, a gushing fountain of a fountain of life. It's a gushing fountain of life in us. Health is restored. Health is corrected. Bodies are corrected. Bodies are corrected. Bodies are healed. Bodies are corrected. Bodies are healed. Bodies are healed. Bodies are healed. Bodies are corrected. Bodies are healed. Bodies are corrected. Because in us is that continuous, bubbling, flowing fountain of life. Continuous, bubbling, flowing fountain of life. Continuous, bubbling, flowing, it's in us. Flowing, it's in us. Flowing, it's in us. Continuous, bubbling, flowing fountain of life. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Still there? <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I could teach on and on. Of course, time's up, so we've got to end. Uh, but it's not in how much all right, this video, we will, we're working on it. So tomorrow you should get this, all right? All right, tomorrow you should get this. Play this, all right? You get audio, you get video. Play it, play, 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 play. You know, I, I've done a teaching. I remember we had a Zoom leaders meeting sometime last year and I asked that we had this little meditation part and I asked that they should cut that part out for me. All right, and he blessed me. I shared it with people who someone had, I mean, it, it healed people. And, and that's me not trying to get too far with it. People got healed just by that part. So you have this. You could say, let's go on. We can, we can, but we shouldn't time up. I could say, okay, let's continue again. I would enter a bit of light, but we're talking about the light. Now life gives light. So we we'll enter life and the next, and that's a final edition for Word Up. All right. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, let's chew, let's chew. You will get it. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. All right, please. And I want to encourage you, all right, please. There's a 14 part message on the website, Understanding Life. There's a 14 part message on the website. Watch this one again and again and again and again and again and again. You can now just slam that one in. And, but watch this video. Watch me. Just let's meditate together if you can. Take it back, take it back. You, it's, you have access to the video. It'll be on YouTube and you get the links and everything. And please, as, as the Lord lays it in your heart, give all right galatians 6 and 6 all right says when you're taught the word you give so this is free will continue to be free but you just be a blessing and say hey i have been taught i could regularize my giving word up is regularly blessing me twice every month so i could also say okay every month every two months every every edition i'm gonna just they're not asked for an offering but this will be my offering just make up your mind you're being blessed spiritually and the bible expects us to this and i won't um you know, I could say, okay, well, there's no need, you know, scripturally, you know, like I said earlier to Jesus had partners in his ministry. So he's just saying, hey, this is blessing me. Let's go on. Let's bless more lives and let's empower, you know, um, this guy blessing us right here to do more. So that's what it is. All right. So if you have access to the website and all that will be, you know, I'm sure you've had emails before that have those, all those details. So just get there and, um, you know, praise God, just get there and, um, you know, wow <laughs> anybody fool like i am anybody like <laughs> anybody fool like i am anybody like whoo glory to god glory to god glory glory wow 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 if you want to jump up jump up and run where you are you know just jump up you know and just run and run and run where you are so the giving details is on the once you go to the website and go to giving go to media you know, so you could use PayPal, you know, be, be, you have access to whatever it is you want to do over there. But wow, I have eternal life. I have eternal life. This is a testimony. I have eternal life. I have eternal life. I refuse to live like one who doesn't have it. I have it. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Wow, I got to go. All right. Thank you for always tuning in. Thank you. I love you. I will be here again, all right, and for our last edition, second weekend in um, in in December. Thank you so much, all right. Thank you, and have a have a blessed week, all right. Please just 
Enjoy the life of God. Enjoy flourishing. Anywhere the river is, there's life. Anywhere the river is, there's life. Everywhere the river goes, there's life. Anywhere the river is, there's life. There's life. There's life in your health, life in your finances, life in your home, life in everything you do. You are bound. You are bound. You flourish. You flourish. You are bound. You are bound. Anywhere the river is. Hallelujah. 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 There's life. Life in your womb. Life in your arm. Life in your legs. Life in your back. Life. Let's stay on this thing till it becomes a gusher indeed. Till it gushes indeed. Because it is a gusher in our spirits. Let our minds chew on it till it's gushing. Till it's gushing. Till it's gushing. Till it's gushing indeed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Wow. Praise God. Amen. 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 I got to. All right. Thank you, Lord. You'll get this tomorrow. Watch, watch, watch. Please give feedback, all right? Let's know how this has been blessing you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> we have come to draw. Yesterday is gone. Today we are in need. Draw from you again, oh. Again, oh. Again, oh. We have come to draw. We can never, never, ever be full enough to run from you again, no, oh, again, no. Oh. We have come to Come to draw, draw, draw.